Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So today, uh, I'm going to cover breaking into cybersecurity. Now, I've seen several posts about the cybersecurity skills gap from people that are trying to get in, and I've also seen images of people talking about how, uh, you know, people trying to get into cybersecurity want to jump straight to pen testing without any knowing knowing any of the core constructs. So. What I'm going to go over today, and, and I, I really do hope this is helpful, and please, if you have, haven't have subscribed, hit the button below and subscribe. If you have any comments or criticisms, I'm more than willing to take them under advisement, look at them, and I really do try to change or, or do things to help better my uh, how I present things to the audience. So first and foremost, let's talk about some of the things that are invaluable when breaking into cybersecurity, and this is both personally and professionally. The first of those is patience. And the reason patience is up there and the reason patience is so important is because not everything happens right away. Now, whether that's you looking for a job and trying to get it, get a new job in cybersecurity, or if you're currently in the field and just trying to make things happen, all right, it requires patience. Things take time, even in cybersecurity. Look, it's not like on the movies. You can't put two, you know, two people on the same keyboard and make things happen. And if you can, great, good on you. But at the end of the day, that's just not how things work generally. Next, I want to talk about passion. All right. Now, anybody that knows me, anybody that talks to me knows that I have a huge passion for cybersecurity. Uh, I started way back in IT fixing computers when I was about seven, eight years old. And since then, things have just, you know, skyrocketed as far as, you know, what I've become passionate about. And cybersecurity is huge. And that's defending organizations, people, privacy, security, you name it. I love cybersecurity. And that's blue team, red team, purple team gray team, I don't care what color you put on it, what spin you put on it, but everything about cybersecurity I love. So a passion translates whenever you're looking for a career in cybersecurity. Not all companies want to take that unicorn and find it. I mean, HR puts it out there, but I'm going to tell you right now, there have been jobs that I've gotten where, yes, the unicorn checklist was there, but that's not what got me the job. It was the passion and willingness to learn and ability to learn. Next, we're going to go over motivation and mentorship. Now, I've talked about both of these topics recently on previous videos, and I'm going to cover them one more time. Motivation is huge. It goes along, along the lines of passion, right? So if you're motivated to learn, if you're motivated to better yourself, if you're motivated to help a company, then that will show in the interview. And that is what will help elevate you above your peers. Mentorship. If you have a mentor, listen to them. Don't take things personally and get hurt and upset. Take it to heart, but use what your mentors tell you and let it change you. Let it help you grow as a person, as a professional. Next is research. In cybersecurity, things are always changing, always moving. So you have to be able to research and adapt. If you can't adapt and if you can't research and find some of these answers on your own, then you're going to struggle and it's going to be a lot it's going to take a lot more for you to get where others are. And a lot of companies will look at your ability to research. Now finally, and I didn't write this down, but it's just come to mind and it's something that I tell all college students that I talk to and other people that I've mentored. In order to get known, in order to prove you know what you know, beyond certifications, and certifications are great, degrees are great, and we're going to go over a few certifications here in a minute, but to prove you know what you know, if you do not have the money to get certified, there are things you can do, one of which is what I'm doing right now, which is a YouTube channel that allows you to put your name out there, put your face out there, and show an audience that you are capable and you know what you're talking about. The other thing is, is if you're into scripting and coding, a GitHub, if you are able to develop scripts, and I don't care if somebody developed them before, but if you're able to write your own and kind of change things so that they do have more features or do something different, then that will show that you know scripting and regardless of the language. And then finally, blogs, right? If you write a blog and it can be on LinkedIn, right? You can write posts and articles on LinkedIn all the time. And with that being a networking site for professionals and how I have uh, instructed people and, and help people get jobs is by networking on LinkedIn. If you use it the right way, those articles can help get your name out there in a positive light. So if you do any of those things, 
and you put those sites, you put those, you know, your GitHub page or your YouTube link or your blog or your LinkedIn on your resume, uh, then it'll help. And it'll get you if, you, if you get past HR or if you don't get past HR and you just happen to send it to a hiring manager, it'll let them know a little bit more about you and let them know that you're willing to put in the effort to keep learning and growing. Now, finally, let's get into some of the knowledge that's gonna be required when you're getting into cybersecurity. And some people have it, some people don't. And so that's why I'm covering it. Now, a basic IT knowledge or, or rather basic IT experience, though preferred, isn't always a necessity. If you have the ability to prove your security aptitude, then at least knowing the basic knowledge can help. And it'll help you gain that security aptitude, whether it's passing a security plus or some other certification, but having an understanding of TCP, UDP, uh, operating systems like Windows, Linux, and Mac, all those things can do nothing but help you. So even if you've never worked in IT in your life, by knowing and researching those topics and really getting an understanding of how communication flows, how operating systems work, what a kernel is, and things of that nature, then it'll benefit you when you go study security because all those things will come back full swing. So port 443, port 80, port 22, all these things matter in security, just like they matter in networking. Uh, operating systems, kernels, drivers, DLLs, all those things matter in security, just like they matter in system administration and help desk and things of that nature. So don't ever think that, oh, I've just graduated college and I'm going to go straight to security, even though I've got a degree in, I don't know, uh, marine biology, right? Great degree, by all means, if that's what you love. But if you've decided you love security more, don't skip over the basics. You have to understand the basics of networking and computing before you can move on to security. Now, let's go into some of the security knowledge that if you don't have any of those, you know, like a GitHub page or a blog or a YouTube channel. So if you have no other way to get your name out there and, you're tr and you haven't done the networking to really uh, meet or, or, or you know virtually introduce yourself to some of the uh, hiring managers and some of the companies that are out there, there are ways that you can improve yourself on paper to at least get to an interview, all right? And people hate it and, and don't get me wrong, I've seen job descriptions and like I said, we're gonna cover that on a later video uh, I think I've covered it in the past, but you know, we'll do a refresher and I'll go over my thoughts on job descriptions and some of the certification requirements. But for now, let's discuss the actual certification requirements that at a basic level you should have for just about any security job. The first one being your security plus. So the security plus is a basic CompTIA cert that shows a company you have a general understanding of security concepts whether that be firewalls, IDSs, IPSs, port security, um, malware and the different types of malware, viruses, trojans, worms, things of that nature. That is the point of the security plus. And there's a lot more to it. We can go over the syllabus, but that's not the point of this video. I just wanna give you an understanding of you know the security plus and what the basic training through CompTIA costs. And as you see here on the screen, it goes from as low as $350 to as high as $900. Now, mind you, that is not um, in-person training. And there are boot camps out there that even now with the, th the way things are, you can still do in-person training, even though it may be virtual online, you still have an instructor that you can talk to. Uh, and there are several institutions out there that do that. So the Security Plus is the first one for any blue team or red team or purple team that you really should get if you're just trying to get into cybersecurity. It shows that basic level of understanding. And if you can pass that, then you have the basic knowledge to really start rising up and getting the other certifications and the other knowledge that there is. Now, staying on the level of CompTIA, let's talk about Red Team, right? So Red Team is things like hacking, uh, exploitation development, bug bounties, things of that nature. Uh, those are all, to me anyways, those all fall in with the Red Team and offensive security. So CompTIA, in competition with EC Council's Certified Ethical Hacker, they have the pen test plus. So as far as basic and, and uh, low level or, or baseline offensive security certs, the pen test plus to me uh, is right in line with CEH 
not maybe necessarily in content. I have never taken the Pen Test Plus personally, but uh, I've heard great things about it, and it gives the CEH a run for its money. Uh, so you again, this is just the pricing for what they offer, but there are boot camps, there are in-person instruction and virtual live online trainings that you can do to help give you a better understanding. But CompTIA does give you the ability to just buy a voucher if you feel you already know the material and have gone over it and can pass it yourself without taking a course. And again, following along the lines of offensive security, we're going to cover the CEH. The CEH has several different types of courses that you can get through EC Council. Plus, again, like everything else, there's a boot camp that you can go to. And... Um, Keychon Evans was an instructor of mine when I went through CEH. And if you go to the right uh, boot camps, it's not about passing the test. It's about being able to do the job. And that's the thing that I, I like to stress to people is you don't go to these courses just to pass the test. You want to get further information. Okay, how can I do better? You want to go beyond just being able to answer a multiple choice question. And if I have this certification, I want to be able to get out and actually do the job. And that is what uh, some of your instructors can actually do for you. So if they're not doing that for you, then please ask them questions and be like, hey, uh, if I run an Nmap scan and it has these options, then you know, is it gonna get noticed by an IDS or an IPS? If I run, you know, if I drop malware on this box, you know, without encoding or encrypting it, do you know if it's gonna get picked up by any antivirus and things of that nature? All those things will not only test your instructor and their knowledge base, but it'll also better you because when they give you a proper answer or any answer, then you have the ability to learn and grow. Finally, and, and I know a lot of people want to talk about um, OFSEC and the OSCP, but to me, and again, personal opinion, um, even though they do cover a lot of the basics, the depth of which you test, which is a 24 hour, you have 24 hours to take the exam, um, and pwn all the, and, and basically exploit all the boxes and game root. And you don't have to do them all to get a passing score, but it helps. Uh, plus be able to run a pet, write a pen test report. I feel the OSCP is for someone that has a little bit more, um, experience or a little bit more expertise in offensive security. So though you can take it, it's, I don't personally recommend it for somebody just getting into the field. But what I do recommend is eLearn Security. And the reason I recommend them is because they do have courses designed for junior pen testers, designed for blue teams, designed for purple teams, where you do incident handling or you do offensive security. So eLearn Security is a great one that you can take a look at as well. And finally, in terms of offensive security, and we're gonna wrap up the offensive security with SANS, is um and the reason i'm saving them till last is because though you can find uh the actual um you can find the exam attempts for uh you know a decent uh, i'd say a, a half decent price the courses themselves if you feel you need to take the entire course are better suited paid for by a company so if you can get security essentials or hacker techniques it's going to run you a good, you know, a few thousand dollars usually, and it's best paid for by a company. Now, if you can pay for it yourself and SANS authorizes that, then by all means go for it. But because of the price, it's generally company sponsored. But what they have here is if you go to SANS.org and look at the cybersecurity skills roadmap, they tell you the certifications that would lead into any of the specializations, ICS cloud management, things of that nature. So please feel free and I'll put this link down below in my description. Uh, please feel free to take a look here. They cover uh, blue team, red team, and instant response and threat handling and things of that nature, threat hunting, as well as management. Now, let's move over to the blue team. Blue team doesn't have a whole lot. eLearn Security has some. I'm sure there's a few other organizations out there, but I am part of an organization called securityblue.team and on the academic advisory board, and the reason this certification came out is because there was so much um, content out there for red teamers, for the offensive side. And the only way you really got any blue team training is either researching on your own, building your own SOC, or working in a SOC and you know becoming an analyst and getting trained that way. Or doing cyber awareness training because some of this is phishing. But 
the beauty of this is it's all hands-on. So yes, you'll have some multiple choice questions, but generally speaking, you get your own lab environments and things like that so that you can work on secure, not only security fundamentals, including imposter syndrome and things of that nature, but phishing, threat intel, digital forensic sim, and incident response. I have been lucky enough to have been on the academic advisory board, take a look at the content, and I think it is phenomenal for anybody getting into cybersecurity. And if you take a look at becoming certified now, their price point honestly is really, uh, really low in consideration of what it offers and the content it offers. Uh, so again, please, if you're looking for Blue Team, take a look at this. And again, it's solely because a lot, 90% of it is hands-on. You get video, you get tests, you get practical activities, the works. Um, so it's a lot more than what a lot of other Blue Team training gets you. And I think it is something that uh, can be very well utilized and um, can prove that you know what you're talking about so that when you get those analyst roles or junior level security roles on a blue team, you're not lost. You have an understanding of log analysis and everything like that. So um, finally, I hope you take into account everything I've told you. And again, blue team, there's not a lot of training. Security blue team is a great avenue to go. E-Learn security is a great avenue to go. And if your company will pay for it, SANS. But again, one of the biggest things of breaking into cybersecurity is being able to research, being able to network, and having patience. Find your mentor, let them guide you, and listen. If you don't do that, then you're going to struggle. Um, Twitter is great. LinkedIn is great. Find somebody and let them help you. Don't think you can do it on your own. Some people can, but the vast majority of us have needed somebody to guide us and point us in the right direction. Because even though the cybersecurity field and the personnel in it is a small, select group of people, and if you don't have the passion and the motivation to keep moving and growing and learning and listening to a mentor, you're going to fall. So again, I hope you find this informative. I hope you enjoy it. Good night.